Alrighty everybody and welcome back to my channel. I'm Marshall, also known as Organa Metallica, and I am here today to share with you uh, a really fun Esper deck that I've been playing recently. So, as we're heading into the arena, um, recognizing that we have Crimson Vow coming out next week, um, we have a ton of new control cards we're going to be looking at, um, I wanted to go ahead and take a look into what happens when we splash black into the blue-white shell that we had previously. So. Same as last time, as we have Jawari Disruption to ping out those turn two plays. Uh, I love Faithful Mending because it's a way to keep our life total high and draw some extra cards while also dipping uh, the things that aren't good for the particular matchup. Uh, Vanishing Verse is the biggest reason to add black to this deck because it is, without a doubt, the best spot removal card in the format. There's very little that doesn't get hit by it. The vast majority of things that this deck struggles with are monocolored and they just die to Vanishing Burst and they don't come back. And so for two mana, happy to have it here. Um, the other thing black gets us early on in the game is access to Siphon Insight. Now this card is a really funny kind of cantrip in that uh, against the green decks, we can rip out um, win cons from their deck or just blockers. Um, against other control decks, we can grab, well, their win cons. And if we can grab their only win con, then that's really great for us. Um, but even just being able to snag their uh, card advantage spells and whatnot for like that is really, really valuable. Otherwise, um, the three drop spot is relatively straightforward. We still have divide by zero, same, uh, learn board as before, uh, looking to use mascot exhibition as our way of closing out games. Um, saw it coming. The last black card that's worth, uh, pointing out is go blank. Um, so being able to attack our opponent's hand is really great proactively. You know, they get to pick the two cards, but you know, especially with, uh, some of the, um, mid-range uh, green decks, um, that may be a big enough portion of their hand where that's powerful enough. Uh, but being able to then exile all cards in that player's graveyard is really, really useful against flashback spells. Um, so being able to take advantage of players like myself that go ahead and proactively dump flashback spells in the graveyard because we'll get value from them later and then use this to just make them lose access to those, um, it makes Memory Deluge look a lot worse. Um, the mana cost is a bit steep. I really wish it were more of a transgress the mind type effect, but um, this is the best we have uh, in standard at the moment. Otherwise, we got Memory Deluge, we've got Doomscar, uh, we've got uh, one Devon City Mastery. I know I previously said um, that I don't go into any matchup with fewer than six Wraths. Uh, I broke my rule here. I previously went down to zero copies of Devastating Mastery and then promptly got Raffle Stomped by Green. Um, so I've got the one of back in here, but for the most part, this deck has enough spot removal um, earlier in the game now um, that it doesn't need quite so many Wraths, but it still feels real scary having to dig for one uh, when, you know, in a six Wrath deck, they're a lot easier to find. Um, I've started putting Amiria's Call in as a one of in a lot of decks. Those two angels are really good. It's another seven drop. You can pump it down as a land if you're having trouble casting it, and it's really great. Um, and last but not least, uh, the Alrin's Epiphany is uh, undoubtedly one of the most powerful cards in this format. Um, I don't necessarily try to avoid playing it just to be a hipster, um, but I know that the format is increasingly... Uh, ready for all runs epiphany and so that's why i'm often uh, hard pressed to lean on it in control shells because it's becomes a really easy thing for people to play around and so i mentioned in my last video in the blue white deck uh, that didn't have all runs epiphany that you can sometimes just win games off of uh, the fact that people expect you to have all runs epiphany and then you foretell you know in this case like a saw it coming and people will play suboptimally thinking it's all runs epiphany now in this particular deck, um, I wanted to experiment and make sure I at least did one video uh, before the Crimson Vow came out where Alrin's Epiphany uh, was part of the formula because seeing how that plays and how it's useful, I think it's relevant. And it's gonna be what kind of defines uh, a lot about this particular Midnight Hunt standard format anyway. Uh, the only other thing of merit to note here is that uh, Cave of the Frost Dragon is coming in. So I still have Hollow Storm Giants, but I've gone down to one copy. Cave of the Frost Dragon is a little bit less taxing on our mana and being able to provide a uh, flying blocker is really useful uh, against uh, Mono White where they're playing the Elite Spellbinder or uh, suiting up things with uh, the Mall of the Skyclaves. And so having a flyer uh, at, at a earlier point in the curve than we would otherwise have Devastating Mastery um, 
does end up uh, being relevant. And so, um, so anyway, without any further ado, that's a deck. We're taking blue-white control. We're adding black to get access to some better removal early on, some ways to attack people's deck and hands in an interesting way that we otherwise didn't have access to. And we're biting the bullet and going in on Allrun's Epiphany as a way to help close out the game. Let's go ahead and see how things go. See you in the arena. All right, we have found our first opponent in Manueru, which I've probably just destroyed <laughs> the pronunciation of, but good luck, Manueru. Um, so this opening hand, I actually like it. Um, we have access uh, to some premium removal uh, against the creature deck. Um, we've got a way to draw cards later, and if we are up against a deck um, that isn't looking to uh, turn creatures sideways, um, Siphon Insight might be a way for us to sort of hedge up this hand against those decks. Um, if this is control, it's going to be a much harder game, but if it's not control, this is going to be a really great opener. Um, so I am happy to keep this. We're on the play, which is nice. So I'm gonna start with a shipwreck march and then go into the Hengate pathway just on the off chance um, that playing Vanishing Verse is relevant. Um, I'm going to regret having done it this way if, okay, this is green white, so it's probably gonna be fine. I was gonna say, I would regret doing it this way if it turns out it's control deck and um, Playing um, Siphon Insight would have been relevant, but this is probably going to go our way. Um, now here, I would otherwise be tempted to uh, foretell Doomscar, but given that they didn't really do anything with their opening turn, uh, I'm going to see if we can snag some value off this Juari Disruption, um, and then maybe foretell next turn, depending on what happens. But right now, we're still sitting pretty. I'm not worried yet. Arc to Tree Line does not worry me. <laughs> Cleric class. Didn't see that one coming, and they I cannot Jawari Disruption it. Um, but the life gain deck is real. Um, hmm. So I do have the option of just, since I have a Wrath for creatures that get out, I can go ahead and just take this away as a value engine uh, right now. Um, and given how important Cleric class is to the deck, I'm just going to go ahead and do that. I might regret it later, but we'll, we'll see. The divide by zero is a great pickup here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and continue to just sit on Doomscar. They don't have any creatures out yet anyway, and so uh, we're going to have at least a turn or two to catch up on the board state. I'm going to go ahead and punish them for casting this intrepid adversary without a third land. Be happy about it. And they're mana screwed. Okay, this is great for us. Um, I'm going to go ahead and sit back on all of the same answers I had before, and then hope I get to Memory Deluge at the end of this turn. Um, there's their third land. Core Celebrant. Yeah, I don't mind that right now. I'd rather Memory Deluge. Okay. And let's start ripping through the deck. Um, Allrin's Epiphany, and I don't need another Black Source. I would mind another White Source. Let's go with the Deserted Beach. This feels great. And another Doomscar is going to make this even better. Um, so I'm going to play the Zerdy Beach. And actually, given... So if we manage to rip another land off the top, having Allrun's Epiphany available to us might actually be pretty good. Um, the other option is to start getting a Doomscar foretold sort of prophylactically. If we had the six land in hand, I might go ahead and uh, get greedy and go for the Allrun's Epiphany, but for here, I'm just going to foretell a Doom Scar and leave up uh, the interaction. Um, I think this is probably our better play because we're ahead, but we're not really stabilized yet. Like, we don't have a way to really end the game uh, at this point. Core Celebrant, not going to worry about. They're going to gain two life, but there's not really any benefit to them at this point for it. So that's okay. And they're going to poke us for one. No big deal. I'm going to take this opportunity to siphon some insight. Get my choice of lands. Uh, I'm going to just snag the planes just to keep life easy for myself. Uh, I'll play the planes. And I didn't draw the other land, but I did get obviously off of the insight there. Um, I think now. I'll foretell this and just keep sitting back on uh, Divide by Zero. There is a temptation uh, to just go ahead and kill these things since I've got the second Doomscar. 
Um, but right now they're not really doing anything scary. I'm not really that worried about it. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and just sit back um, and get ready to maybe siphon some more insight. Uh, divide by zero if something really scary comes out. Um, this isn't worrisome. Righteous Valkyrie. So that's not really doing anything yet. They're going to gain um, two life for this entering. Um, I think what I do actually is that it's not necessarily that scary. So I'm going to divide it by zero mostly so that I can go and grab myself a environmental sciences. And this basically uh, washes out the damage that they'll have done this turn. No big deal. Perfect. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and play the Field of Ruin here. Alvarin's Epiphany, just because it's functionally free. <laughs> um, and then in my extra turn, I can Environmental Sciences Doom Scar. I have no idea if Test of Talents is going to have any value, but we'll find out. <laughs> If nothing else, it gets discarded to Faithful Mending just as well as any other card. Um, so all environmental sciences, gain some life, then out the deck. Um, take the black, not necessarily because I think it's incredibly relevant, but may as well just make sure I've got all my bases covered. Um, I've got six mana up, and so I'm going to go ahead and uh, just foretell another Doom Scar. Um, this is sit there, ready to go. And then, otherwise, this next turn, I still get to do pretty much anything I normally would. Um, I think that unless something changes my opinion, Faithful Mending is my play here. Um, there's like a minute chance that I um, would get something helpful off the Siphon Insight. Um, but my suspicion is that my opponent is playing a pretty tried and true after deck. So they're going to gain some life, and they're not yet at the amount of life it would take to do anything useful. But it, it is going to make it a little bit annoying to actually close out this game, but eventually I'll just blow it all up. I'm, just, I'm mostly just waiting for something more exciting to kill, you know. Like, none of these things really give me that much pause. So let me Faithful Mending. That Test of Talents is probably not going to be useful if they've got basically just Life King creatures and Claire classes. Um, and this feels a lot better. Uh, I wish we could hold on to the, the Bright Climb pathway, but Sock Coming is going to end up being pretty good. Another Doom Scar. Ooh, ooh boy. Let's foretell this. Um... Let's go ahead and get my one free damage in. <laughs> and given that we have so many gosh darn doom scars, um, I think I just go ahead and blow everything up. Losing the one birdo. Like those birds were to be diminishing value. Eventually what I really need is a hollow storm giants. And then this is great. Let's me leave up uh, a whole bunch of different options. And uh, we've still got uh, two Wraths ready to rock, so feel pretty good. Um, Righteous Valkyrie, I mean, yeah, it's just, you saw it coming as a time walk. No, they're probably better uh, targets in their deck, but, you know, I don't know what it is. Now here, um, I think the real play now that I've kind of got things under control is I want to Memory Deluge more than anything, so... I'm just gonna sit back, um, not worry about foretelling. Book of Exalted Deeds. They're not Snowland, so they're not trying to play the Faceless Haven game. This is just a value Book of Exalted Deeds. Yeah, sure, do it. Um, I don't. I'm just not gonna let them make many angels because I'm not gonna let them resolve very much, <laughs> or at least keep things on the board. We've got four cards in hand. All right, so the things that I want here. I'd like another Memory Deluge. And the things that I'm debating about are Saw It Coming or Go Blank. Um, Go Blank, I can start ripping apart their hand. I don't necessarily know that that's going to be that amazing. Saw It Coming is a bit more reactive. Uh, but right now, their hand can't be that amazing anyway. 
because they're not drawing things on playing things on a regular basis. So I'm going to take the saw coming because it sort of insulates me against the things that I haven't drawn yet. That's my thinking. Right clan pathway. Uh, I'm going to drop that on black. Yep. So I can foretell saw it coming. Still have plenty of mana left over to do things. And rock and roll from there. If this book for some reason becomes a problem, eventually get another vanishing verse. Maybe even off of this memory deluge. Maria's Call is great here. Um, I think I'm going to go with the Divide by Zero. I think it's a little bit more uh, play. Um, I'm not worried about this book, so I'm just going to go ahead and leave it there. And so, at 9 mana, I can play the Amiria's Call. That'll get me a bunch of dudes, and that's pretty good. That leaves me enough to saw it coming, but not divide by 0. I think that's worth it. Let's make some angels. Boom. Oh, okay. So they could potentially put a uh, counter on my angel. Um, vanquish the horde. No, I want my creatures. So don't do that. <laughs> now that I know they've got the Book of Exalted Deeds, assuming that they have more than one copy, I kind of want to get aggressive with a Siphon Insights to see if I can snag one from their deck. Uh, because that would be very fun to have access to. <laughs> um, happy to snag a win here. They can feel free to go ahead and put a counter on my angel for me. I would not complain about that. Um, here at 9 mana, I kind of want to have action up and still be able to memory to lose, so I'm just going to sit put. At this point, we're just trying to deflect whatever they put at us. Um, it's good to know that they do have some removal, but honestly, um, the Vanquish the Horde is not the the one that I would go for, um, especially in their deck. Like I just I don't see that it being very productive for them. But all right, Fortifying Draw. Okay, so they're pumping. Uh, Pumping my creature in order to gain two life. Fine. <laughs> it's not yet going to trigger the Book of the Zelda Deeds. That will, um, but I've got Fading Hope, so if they want to make an angel, they can make an angel. I wish I really wish I had a way to punish them for this. <laughs> Alright, pass to attackers, they make an angel, go into full control mode just in case, and I'm going to tell them. Um, actually, first memory deluge. Auto pay that. Da -da -da. See, I wanted. I almost did the bounce first, um, but I want to use the scry off of the fading hope to set up my draw after I memory deluge. So that's where the sequencing matter. Allrun's epiphany is going to basically end this game for us. Um, don't really need much land, so I'm going to grab a Siphon Insight. Um, I don't think it really matters in the grand scheme of things at this point. So, uh, and now I'll go ahead and Fading Hope. Their Angel, and I don't think they're going to get another turn. I'm going to be able to crack them for eight. Snakeskin Veil. Okay, maybe they do get another turn because I'll be able to block, but um, I don't... I'll, I'll be able to vanishing verse it, so yeah, I don't care. Fine, I don't get to scry. Um, yep, I'm good. There's fading hope anyway, so let's see. I want to. They have no cards in hand, so yep. Auron's Epiphany, they might just scoop to this. Probably should. I uh, will fading hope. They're Deuterino. Don't care. Attack. There's eight, and then the crack back is ten. Next, all attack. Thanks for the game, Maneru, but this one's over. Alright, our next opponent. Condizio. Con 
thousand. Good luck, sir or ma'am. All right, I love this hand. We've got a wrath if it's aggro. We've got a way to punish a turn two play. Um, we've got divide. We've got memory deluge. Basically everything I could want. Maybe wish that uh, Juari was a vanishing verse, but let's not get greedy, greedy now, I suppose. Basically everything in the format. Mono red could punish. Um, that's that is true. <laughs> Rather have that not be the case, but we'll see. Yeah, mono red. I think this hand still has action against it, but there it's going to put me to the test. All right, make a dude red black. All right, well, that's a pretty good one. Um, I think I want to go, I want to keep my white sources. I'm going to drop this so it goes away untapped. I don't need black yet, so play that. Um, either they give me something to warrior disruption or I get to fading hope, something else. But here, um, I don't know how often I'm going to get to a chance to use this, so I'm just going to take it where I can. Cool. All right, drop a swamp and in this case um, I'm gonna go ahead and take the opportunity to foretell the doom scar and then if something crazy happens I can fading hope um, only thing I'm tenant oh hey uh, you know that's um there's worse I'm gonna go ahead and bounce it all right do that the cards in hand are actually good enough that I don't think I want to uh, faithful mending them away just yet. Um, Siphon Insight's interesting. I could potentially grab removal spells with that, so that is a real draw. But for the time being, play Bright Clan Pathway. Um, shoot, I should have gone with Clearwater Pathway. Like they're almost certainly going to give me something to divide at the very least, but I did technically give up the ability to Memory Deluge, which is fine. So I'm probably not going to do that yet anyway. But, oh well, live and learn. Immerstim Predator. Yes, the Immerstim. Uh, I think the answer is still to divide by zero. But you see they're playing careful because of that um, Jawari disruption. They're afraid of another one. Uh, they've got three cards. This is going to put me to four or five next turn. Uh, teachings is not going to be good here. Environmental Sciences is going to be fine, I think. Uh, what do I do here? I think I'm going to get the reduced memory just because like, I'm going to need to start answering things. <laughs> That's going to be mission number, well, close to one. This image to predator is going to become challenging because if he, they get multiple cre uh, creatures out in the battlefield, um, it's going to be pretty hard to remove, but uh, reduced memory exiles, so it's not quite as scary as it could be. Um, I think in this case, I'm going to just hope I get the opportunity to memory deluge. I, sh I mean, I should. <laughs> There's the image gen predator, which is okay. They don't have a two drop, so I will get to kill that. Let's take a memory deluge. Get another memory deluge and a deserted beach. I love these lands, by the way, because like at this point in the game, they're just gas. Drop it to Zero Beach. Uh, get rid of the Predator. Do you get a 3 2? Which I'm not thrilled about, but eventually I will get to Doob Scar that. Um, I'll just take some pain this next turn. But you're going to play this. The You're going to go ahead and have to let them just get that because they're going to get to get some damage with this. But if I bounce it now they're just going to replay it and I mean and then they lose the impulse but I'd rather um, rather see I guess which thing because I can always blow this up with Doomscar which actually is probably the right play so they're going to take a land they don't get to do anything here so I'm going to yeah I'm going to hold on to divide by zero I'm just going to wrath next turn so I'll siphon the insight from them and see good Vampire Socialite is a 2-2, two, two. put plus one, plus one count on it. Um, honestly, I'm just going to get a land just to make sure I can keep that going. 
Almond's Epiphany is good here. So I'm fine enough on my colors. So I'm going to go ahead and play their mountain just to keep my hand uh, unobvious. I will foretell. Oh, hold on. So, well, yeah. So here's always the, the, the question is do I Almond's Epiphany and then on the second turn, Doom Scar, uh, losing my birds? Um, in this case, since I got the divide by zero is back up, I'm gonna Doom Scar now and then all runs up to next turn. If they don't do anything scary, I get to memory deluge. So I feel good about it. Okay, so I, I could um, foretell the all runs epiphany, but then I lose the ability to do anything on their turn. Um, and I'd rather just, it's probably better to just go for a seven mana all runs. Fair point. Hide the eye tyrant, okay. See, nothing scary. No big deal. It's memory delusion. Okay, so here, Hall of the Storm Giants is going to be good. It's going to be a way we can end the game eventually. Um, I want this extra Doom Scar. I kind of also want the Fading Hope, but I think I need the Doom Scar more. And then draw another Doom Scar, of course. That's how, how this has to go, right? Drop the creature land and. Make some birdos. Call, call. Um, there we go. Okay, let me reset. Boom. Okay. Um, the temptation to, to go blank here is pretty high, honestly. Um, okay, clear water pathway on black since I want one of those out. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and. Um, Crafty with the Hive, I can activate the Hall of Storm Giants um, and kill it, but I need, because it has Menace, it's going to be one, but they're going to get to snag something on my graveyard, and I've just got to choose to be okay with that, and that's cool, too. Um, now, the real question here is, since the plan is almost certainly going to be Hall of the Storm Giants, I think I'm going to go ahead and foretell a Doomstar now. Um, this still lets me um, activate my creature lands and then the 3-3 um, the three, three Beholder means that even the Cave of the Frost Triant ends up being like a decent answer to it, but let's see where we go. Alright, so they are going to activate it. I am going to have to lose um, probably a Memory Deluge, but or I could activate or cast the Memory Deluge that they try to eat, but I think I want to take this opportunity to kill the Hive, because like right now they just don't have many threats, and I don't currently have a convenient way to kill them. They're going to get rid of Siphon Insight. That's that's obnoxious, but it gets to be good. Let's go ahead and activate the Hall. And you can have one of my birds. But I will take your hive. <laughs> they didn't kill the bird. They just need to reorder the blockers. That seems rough. Um, something tells me that what's in their hand isn't particularly scary, although probably would have cast it. Um, given that I got the divide by zero, the fading hope, I'm just going to go ahead and smack at the birds. I think it's a little bit too early to get in with the Hall of Storm Giants just because I don't have any backup if they. Um, try to get in with anything else. Um, they've still got those main... Uh, now, see, this is tough. Um, so, the real issue is that they can cast things from the graveyard. If I bounce it, they can still cast one thing. Yeah, so what sorceries do they have in their graveyard that they could do that with? So, the play with fire. They get a free play with fire. That's... That's okay. And if they try to get too creative, I will just do the same thing that I did last time, kill their, um, kill it of the, uh, attacker. So, they paid for it twice. Oh, to get the 2 plus 2 plus 2 creatures. So, yeah, fine. I don't care. It's still not big enough to beat a hall. It's certainly not big enough to, um, to survive a Doomscar. <laughs> Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and memory deluge. Let's see, vanishing verse, very good here. Marius call, also very good here. 
And yeah, that's fine. It's my turn. Shipwreck Marsh. Uh, now, if um, I can cast this, um, and then if things go too crazy next turn, I get to uh, either Vanishing Verse or Divide by Zero. So this is kind of the point where I was looking to get to where I can start doing seven mana things um, more reliably. And in this case, instead of it being the Hall of Storm Giants, I went with the Angels just to start establishing something on the board that lets me leave up more things to do. Blood Chief's Thirst. Uh, yeah, you got it, Chief. Florian Voldaren Scion. Okay, that is not something I'm especially worried about. Um, so what I'll do is just get rid of this, and then Florian does nothing. <laughs> Pass to attackers. Boom. My turn. The temptation to Fading Hope it is pretty high. I will get to Scry. Um, nah, this is fine. My turn. I'm, I am, I'd like to think that I am in control of this game now. Um, I could be wrong about that, but it's, they're empty handed. I've got a pile of stuff. It's just fine. Now, I could have gotten uh, aggressive with the Hall of Storm Giants, but what this line of play lets me do is uh, leave up all my action, including Memory Deluge, and then if they decide to attack with Florian, I just get to eat it for free. Cool. They go ahead and just time walk themselves functionally. I mean, not that they could do anything different, but, you know. And we win. <laughs> because here, I'm just going to go ahead while I... Ah, I can't manage to reverse that. Um, yeah, that's fine. They scooped it up anyway. <laughs> the Auburn's Epiphany was going to make sure we flew over for the win regardless, so. Good game. Well played. Alright, next opponent. Maelstrom Pulse. Good choice of username. Kind of conflicts with their avatar, but you can get behind it. Um, hmm. This hand is a bit sus. Uh... It's got a way to buy some time, maybe rip some stuff out of there, and Sonic Cummings fine. This hand is aggressively medium. Um, I'm not super enthusiastic about it, but I don't think it's worth going to six over. Let's find out if I have to regret that. Okay. Against green, this is going to be fine. Fine, fine, fine. So here I'm going to play, yeah, I'm gonna play Shipwreck Marsh. Um, the reason being is that I want to preserve as many white sources as possible because the Devastating Mastery is eventually going to be really uh, key here. So, I mean, this means that I don't get to do a turn two Siphon Insight, but it's gonna to have to just be fine. Um, here, play this on white. Um, I'm going to go ahead and leave this sock coming unforetold so that I can fading hope if there becomes a good opportunity for it. But um, there's also an argument for just not doing that there. Interesting. It, this went from completely predictable. I actually wasn't even paying attention. I thought this was another uh, Greenland, but we are against Sultai. So interesting. This, I don't think this changes a ton. But it does, like, it means that I probably should have more aggressively gone for Siphon and Safe. What it does mean is that I can comfortably leave this Doomscar unfortold for the time being, because I'm not sure what we're going to be up against here. Um, is this more mid-range or control? Well, we're going to find out. Eska's Chariot is not something that I particularly want to deal with right now, so thank you for letting me counter that. Your contributions are noted. <laughs> um... I think here I'm going to play the hall and actually foretell the Doomscar in case it's ever relevant. So it looks like they've got some critters. Um, but then I can Fading Hope anything but that. <laughs> but I can uh, 
do this. I'm not going to be able to punish them for it, but... Ugh. Pripes. Alright, do I want this swamp? I've got two lands in hand. Um, I need more action. Perfect world, I get a Vanishing Verse. Come on, Vanishing Verse. That's not a Vanishing Verse. <laughs> um, I kind of want to siphon Insight now on the off chance that they might grab something good. Because I don't think I'm going to be able to test the talents anytime soon. So, doing this now lets me grab a Root Coil Creeper. Is that what I want here? Yeah, might. It's better than nothing, I guess. Um, so, play the Root Coil Creeper. Maybe it's worse than maybe it's not, but we'll find out. Really wish I had a way to make that Ren delay. Storm the Festival. Oof. Another chariot? Okay. That's what needs to happen. Put on a field of ruin. Um, so in this case, what's interesting is if they try to get too crazy with the chariot, I actually have Hall of the Storm Giants up and they may not realize that yet. Um, got to assume that they're smarter than that and they have they're shockingly close to storm the festival which doesn't bode well for me <laughs> so just gotta hope that they play really really poorly here which might happen who knows looks like they're gonna give me the opportunity let's see pass to attackers it's entirely possible that we've got the fight spell. Yeah. Got to do it. You got to take this opportunity while I can because I can wrath next turn. But um, it's going to cost him a lot of mana to answer this whole, this whole of the storm giants, regardless. So, got to make him have it. Okay, bye bye chariot. There's a Ren and seven. Please bring me tree folk. Yes. Um, I say that like it's something I wanted. <laughs> oh, this is gonna be tough. But the upside is they don't have snow lands, so that's that's fine. Um, what's kind of cute is if before I blow up everything, I can use this to let's see. I can use this to cast a much cheaper Siphon Insight. <laughs> All runs Epiphany! Yes, please! That is... I, I don't have enough mana to cast it this turn, but that might be good enough. <laughs> um, yeah. They're going to storm the festival next turn, which I'm not thrilled about, but... I can actually I can test a talent set, so it's actually this is actually fine. <laughs> now that I think about it, what am I talking about? Test a talent is almost always irrelevant in this matchup, but here it'll actually be good. They milled another all res of Prosperous Innkeeper, fine. Not giving me the chance. Okay. Now the Doom Scar is Great. I will take that every day. Here, it's kind of annoying because, like, these Aurin's tokens aren't going to be enough to fill a Ren because they got a chance to plus it first, but oh well. It's pretty sweet as if I could chain their Aurin's Epiphany into my own Aurin's Epiphany, but let's uh, not get too greedy now. Ooh. Oh, that's nasty. Oh, and now I don't have enough mana to test a talent set. Oh, this is literally the worst possible outcome. Oh, no. Divide by zero. I love my opponent's deck so much. This is so good. Oh, man. Oh, I'm going to lose so hard. <laughs> My biggest hope here is that they can drop the mascot exhibition so I can just wrath it all at once. They are playing so smart. Um, my opponent is very good. Very, very good at this game. 
All right. Uh, unfortunately, I cannot afford to not Doom Scar here. So there's that. And at least we got a test of talent still. But based on. Oh man, their deck is so cool. I wonder if this is something I can find elsewhere. Because, like, I. I played Bant and been kind of underwhelmed. But this, what they're playing here, is pretty decent. So the real question here is. Is this a reasonable test of talent? I mean, I'm obviously not going to be able to get any more ma uh, mascot exhibitions. I'd really love to be able to use it on Storm the Festival. But if I don't draw a Wrath, then I'm just up a creek without a paddle. So my question here is, do I take the test of talents and hope that I come up with an answer to Storm the Festival? Or do I memory delusion to try to find a Wrath? I think I'm going to lose almost certainly, but I think memory deluge to find Wrath is my just best chance of winning. Didn't find it here, but I can grab Faithful Mending Vanishing Verse. Yeah, I just don't feel great. It does not feel great. I've got five mana up, so they can still drop some nasty stuff. Oh, getting that all runs epiphany. They're all runs epiphany divided by zero is literally the worst possible thing that happens. Not only does it mess up my plan, but it gives them all runs epiphany. Oh, and this is this is not going any better. All right, um, I think I faithful mending here in case I get a wrath. I got a wrath. And I, it feels awful, but I gotta get rid of Vanishing Verse too. Submit to Fave. Okay, good. This leaves me with enough mana to use Test of Talents. Please don't have to count though. Okay, good. All right, so the Gambit on Memory Deluge paid off, not the way I expected it to, but it did pay off. And it doesn't look like they have a counter spell, at least based on the two cards they had previously. Um, so that's good. Um, Start the festival. YOLO. Got hope for the best here. Okay. Good. Their hand is Meat Cook Master. Okay. We maybe we got a shot. Snag the Star on the festivals. This is such a cool deck. I am gonna need to build this by the old gods. That's good to know about. Ascus Chariot. They built more Almonds, Wrens. Like everything in here makes a lot of sense, and I love this. Um, they don't run counter spells, so that's a thing. Already got the one out of their yard, so this is good. Okay, I like where we're at, but I'm not out of this yet by any means. Um, so I think my outs are to actually get as much damage in as I can while I can. So smack them. I mean, the coast is clear. I'm not going to get a clear image of that for a while. Um, and I'm going to leave this planes in hand so that I can still Faithful Mending at the end of turn. All right, still feeling pretty good. All right, Faithful Mending. Okay, for the Frost, Frost Dragon is good. I'll pitch like so. Having a backup man land is helpful. There's the cave. Um, you know what? Same trick as last time. Um, not being able to memory deluge here feels a little yucky, but having access to Vanishing Verse feels better. We might actually win this one. Like, it's too early to get too eager, but yeah, there we go. We got out of it. So yet another example of be playing to win as opposed to playing to not lose. Um, and so right there, it would have been really easy to play the test of talents to try to keep those creatures off the board because I, I don't have a wrath in hand. I kind of had to just hope that I'd be able to dig toward one. And to be fair, it got scary having to dig two times to get to it. Um, but being able to see that storm of the festival there meant that I knew that the only clean answer I was going to be able to get um, in the near future was that test of talents. Um, so I guess this was really a long way to say <laughs> it's a lot uh, better to get lucky than to get good. <laughs> anyway, catch you in the wrap up.
All right, and here we are for the wrap up. Um, so as you can see, uh, adding in that black splash does change the texture of how the deck plays out a fair amount. Um, in this case, we also changed up the wind cons a little bit, and so having access to all runes epiphany uh, changes things up a little. But um, you know, in this case, I'm pretty happy with how this deck goes. Go blank didn't really show its value there as much as it could have because we didn't really face against the the control decks that I expected to. Um, Vanishing Verse uh, is still really premium there. Um, I am tempted now, having gone through this set of games, uh, to also throw in um, Fateful Absence somewhere here. Um, in my mind, uh, Vanishing Verse is just so much better. Fateful Absence that, you know, I just swapped it out one to one, but being reminded of the relatively niche cases where Vanishing Verse is worse is uh, worth making note of. Um, but also uh, just being able to add in a few more targeted removal spells um, would actually really help, especially things that can hit Planeswalkers. Um, because realistically, looking at this deck is that, you know, if we're going up against a Ren on seven, really the only answers we've got are one Devastating Mastery, three Vanishing Verse. And so that's really taxing um, the removal that we have there. So as we've gone down on counter spells relative to the blue-white deck, we aren't going to be able to sort of catch it um, reactively as often um, so that's one place that I might go with this but otherwise um, you know I love the Emiria's call ended a few games um, that was pretty great uh, being able to siphon insight uh, <laughs> on at least one occasion uh, actually backfired because it turns out that uh, getting your opponent's copy of Alren's Epiphany divided by zero is really 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 rough <laughs> um, but other than that being able to rip off a couple blockers uh, every so often or um, being able to get um, you know some value cards or even just a land in some cases um, really helps and so all together this deck did a pretty good job of um, turning the corner um, where the blue white deck sometimes struggles um, and altogether, to me, it's a much more fun deck to play, but that's obviously your choice. Um, I would be tempted to see how Leer uh, would do in this shell. Um, Leer is just so good that, you know, it's going to be hard to uh, be sad about having him in pretty much any uh, shell, but especially since we've gone down so much on counter spells already here, it's just kind of inviting him to the party. Um, so I think if I were to take this out again, just for funsies, I might go down at least one copy of All Runs Epiphany and go up Leer um, and just see what we happen uh, because it's uh, it's a fun shell and it's only going to get more fun after Crimson Vow hits uh, Arena later this week. Uh, so look for another video uh, later this week with uh, those new cards in play. And until next time, thanks for joining me in the Arena. I, I'm Marshall uh, here on the Organo Metallica channel, um, and uh, thanks for being here.